Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are here to discuss Awakenings of the Devil Fruit variety. Which is interesting because even though we've known about this concept since the glory days of Impel Down, Awakenings still have yet to be truly explored in the series, and in fact, we can name the number of confirmed Awakenings of Devil Fruit users on one hand. Provided that hand has six fingers, that is. Otherwise, you know, we'd need a second hand, and that just seems like such a waste to count one more, you know? Instead, that second hand could be used to press the subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, which would result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, a much more better use in my not at all biased opinion. But the idea of Awakenings at the moment very much takes a backseat to Haki and furthering that exploration. But considering the absurd power we've seen from Awakened Fruit users, it's only a matter of time before this whole concept takes the stage. And in fact, I would posit that we may very well have seen far more Awakened Devil Fruit users than you may think. Just as a brief recap though, the established canon Awakened users we know of thus far are obviously Doflamingo and Katakuri, two Paramecia wielders, well, one Paramecia and one special Paramecia, both of whom were able to expand their abilities to affect the environment around them, turning it into String and Mochi respectively. Although to be fair, they were both pretty subtle uses of what is, in theory, a pretty monumental power. And of course, the other Canon Awakened users would be the Jailer Beasts of Impel Down, all of whom were Awakened Zone users, which gives them access to these like super chunk forms with increased everything. Power, speed, durability, recovery time, you name it, an Awakened Zone has it except for affecting their environment. Zoan does not have that. But something I do feel is very, very important to highlight is Mino Chihuahua, which I know is not a sentence any of you expected to hear today, but post time skip, this little fellow was recruited as a Jailer Beast of Impel Down, and while it is not confirmed if he is indeed an Awakened Zoan, he is absolutely going to be the first candidate that I submit here today as a potential Awakened Fruit user. I mean, I know he doesn't look like much due to the whole Chihuahua Devil Fruit thing, but his form is in keeping with the rest of the Jailer Beasts, and I do think that it would be reasonable to suggest that there is a certain standard that these beasts have to achieve in order to become employed at Impel Down. So in all seriousness, I am feeling pretty damn good about Mino Chihuahua being an awakened Devil Fruit user. But moving on to someone who will probably be taken as less of a joke, the most obvious choice to have already awakened their Devil Fruit to me is Tony Tony Chopper. And even this deep into the realm of 2020, I am still flabbergasted that a lot of people simply don't see this. But Monster Point is 100% an awakening even if it hasn't been referred to as such. The Monster Point form looks incredibly, strikingly, perfectly similar to the Jailer Beast, and it also comes equipped with most of the funky features of an Awakened Zoan. But the main argument I see used against it is that the Jailer Beasts were able to keep up their forms pretty much permanently, whilst Chopper is only able to engage a Monster Point for brief bursts. But that also makes perfect sense, because Chopper did artificially access this Awakening through the Rumble Balls, so he didn't get there by whatever means you're supposed to, so feel free to call it like a partial Awakening, or an incomplete awakening, whatever. It is still an awakening. So if anything, that's a pretty exciting thought to see Chopper potentially push this further. But I do quite like the idea that the very first straw hat to awaken the devil fruit was this cotton candy loving lad. But let's move away from Zoans because other devil fruits do indeed exist. And these next two are going to go as a pair because Kuzan and Sakazuki present by far the best evidence for the existence of awakened Logias that we have seen in the series. Primarily through the battle on Punk Hazard, which permanently altered the climate, which is my prime thought on what an Awakened Logia would actually do, because it goes so far as to explain the entire One Piece world, really. For example, why is it perpetually daytime on any slobby? Well, perhaps that's thanks to an Awakened user of the Pika Pika no Mi. Or why is Raijin Island consistently bathed in lightning strikes? Well, that could simply be thanks to an Awakened user of the Goro Goro no Mi, and so on and so forth. Which isn't to say that I think Kanel or Kizaru are Awakened users themselves. There's really nothing to go by in that regard. However, Kuzan and Sakazuki are quite different, because we have seen the demonstrable effects of their abilities in creating the natural phenomena of Punk Hazard. Because even though Logias are pretty insane right out of the box, this is just a whole new level. Two years later, Punk Hazard is still burning and freezing in equal measure. This is not your regular Logia use at work, and as such, I think it would be a fairly reasonable assumption to label both Sakazuki and Kuzan as potentially awakened Devil Fruit users. Sticking with the Logia realm though, one name that's always bound to come up in this conversation is Crocodile. Mostly because of a statement he made during the Alabaster arc when facing off against Luffy for the first time where allegedly Crocodile states something along the lines of having mastered his devil fruit to perfection, thus implying an awakening in retrospect. However, this is one of those many, many situations where a fan translation has been taken far too literally for far too long. And in fact, if you look at the official English for either the anime or the manga, Crocodile doesn't even come close to stating anything like this. For example, in the manga, his dialogue is the following. I've worked hard to develop my devil fruit powers. I can use them to make any weapon I 
I want. Unlike some fools who are satisfied with their powers as they are, I continually condition myself and improve my skills. Which, whilst an admirable thought, Crocodile did still go on to lose to a pre-time skip pre-gear pre haki Luffy, so, hmm? But if anything, with this statement, Crocodile is implying the exact opposite of mastering his abilities to perfection, actually blatantly admitting that he still has progress to make. Meanwhile, in the anime, he doesn't even mention this at all. He just vaguely says, I am not like you other fools who are preoccupied with your abilities, and then we move on. Even without leaning on this internet open legend, though, Crocodile is still a reasonable thought, because he can do a wide array of things that we don't generally see displayed from Logia Fruits. Crocodile has a lot of utility, with one specific example being that he can can drain the moisture from things, which is nice, but not necessarily an awakening. Plus, he also hasn't demonstrated the more permanent climate effect, given that he needed to use the dance powder to plunge Alabaster into a drought. Not that that is, in any way, the confirmed effect of a Logia awakening, but Crocodile is a bit of a tough one. To me, his abilities seem more like a natural evolution along the lines of Luffy's gears, rather than some sort of awakening. But at the same time, I would not be surprised to find out one day in the far future that he is an awakened user. And in which case, I will go on to shame him even more for losing to Luffy on Alabaster. But another name that comes up in the Logia world would be Ace, who I would be even less inclined to believe than Crocodile actually, but the idea is that when Ace appeared on Drum Island, it was said to be a very strange day in that it did not snow, in that specific town it is, not the entirety of the island, which is a fairly relatively strong piece of evidence. However, we have quite recently in the grand scheme of things received an explanation for this through the Ace novels, the canonicity of which is, that's debatable. And I really don't wanna go into this too deeply, but no, the story was not written by Oda, it was supervised by him, and it is different to the Oda supervised films in that the Ace novel is intended to fill a gap in the story rather than take place in a what if scenario that doesn't fit into the timeline. In any case, during this story, when Ace visits Shanks, Ben Beckman states that Ace's haki is strong enough to melt away the snow while he was there, which you know you can choose to ignore if you'd like, and in the end, it probably doesn't even matter because Ace is, well, he's a little bit dead, isn't he? And speaking of dead, I wanna throw in a curveball now because going back to Paramecias, I think it's entirely possible that Brook, of all people, may also be an awakened Devil Fruit user. Brook is a bit tough though because he's a very unique Paramecia and he certainly isn't a generation style like Doflamingo or Katakuri, and as such, you really cannot compare it directly to their examples. But following the time skip, Brook's soul related abilities present a huge layer of escalation upon his Devil Fruit, which originally just allowed him to plonk his old soul back into his old bones. But nowadays, not only does he have free control over his own soul, but he is also able to exert influence over and even damage other soul-based existences, which we have seen repeatedly with Big Mom's homies and such. It is complete and utter 100% speculation, but Brook is a pretty wild user of the Omi Omi no Mi. However, because it is unique to every other fruit, even the general Paramecia brands, it is impossible to come to a solid conclusion, but I must say I am all on board with the idea of an awakened Brook. Now to quell some thoughts that I know some of you might be having right now, I should also touch on two other confirmed awakened users being Guild to Zoro and Douglas Bullet, the main antagonists of One Piece film Gold and Stampede respectively. This does go back to the Ace novel conversation, but these two are definitely not canon, which is why I haven't been, you know, wildly eager to mention them. But Tesoro is the user of the Goro Goro no Mi, which allows him to manipulate, not generate gold, important distinction there. And his awakening basically just extends the range of that, which can cover the entirety of his casino ship complex. Meanwhile, Bullet's Devil Fruit is the Gasha Gasha no Mi, a paramecia that allows him to create new things by combining combining inanimate objects as well as breaking them down, and his awakening is quite similar to Tesoro's in that it seemingly just increases the range of objects accessible to him, which is quite literally anything non-living. And I do think it's important to bring these two up because they show the potential for awakenings of a non-generator type Paramecia, a fantastic canon example of which would be used to Skid actually, whose ability allows him to attract and repel objects with magnetism, so a potential awakening for him could follow the Tesoro bullet standard by heavily increasing his range of magnetism. But when it comes to more speculated awakenings, there does also exist a whole area which I don't wanna to get too far into, but in many cases, it would be a natural assumption to consider the peak figures of One Piece to be potential awakened users. And a good example of something I'm referring to here would be Dragon, who, if indeed he does have a devil fruit, which has not been confirmed. However, if he did his status and implied abilities in the world, well, that would lead us to giving him the benefit of the doubt of being an awakened user, which would not be the craziest thing in the world. And similar characters would also include someone like Kaido, although to this point, we've really only seen two distinct forms. Although I personally think it would be quite fun for the standard form we know of as Kaido to be his awakened level. And maybe that would even go on to explain the discrepancy with his legs and such in those really weird flashbacks. Although when he gets serious, he does seem to favor using the full dragon form. So who 
knows? I would find it really weird if he was not an Awakened Fruit user though. Weird and quite terrifying to think that there is further potential within someone like Kaido. But also people like Whitebeard, whose Guru Guru no Mi is said to be a power that can quite literally destroy the world. That might be much less the Guru Guru is doing and more Whitebeard being able to awaken it and increase the range of effect, a la Bullet and Tazora. And once again though, the strongest man in the world, look, I'd lean towards believing that he was an Awakened user. Otherwise, I feel like this whole practice might just seem a bit arbitrary if we have someone like Doflamingo and others like Katakuri who stumble upon this secret, but not figures like Whitebeard. Then again, the difficulty of awakening may also very much scale depending on the fruit user. For example, Chopper who used a very standard human fruit may have been able to accidentally fall into an awakening, whereas perhaps a mythical Zoan user would have a harder time pushing their already insane powers to that point. But this video really does only scratch the surface of potential. Awakenings are still quite new to us and heavily unknown in nature. Whatever the case though, I think it's very safe to say that we have already encountered all sorts of awakened users that have yet to be brought to light. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Groundline Review and I'll see you next time.